Some men have it, a full lush mane of manly hair. Others don't. It's called androgenic alopecia, male pattern baldness, and 40% of adult men have it. I think I look better bald, I'm always told that. I mean, look at my beautiful cousin here, he's very attractive. <laughs> but not everyone is a fan of the follically challenged. Bald guys, um, not really attracted to them. They, they just have no hair. <laughs> now scientists have confirmed that the roots of this hairy dilemma lie in the DNA on chromosome 20, where they found two genetic changes. You could call them bald genes. If people have the presence of both of these risk genes, that increases their uh, risk of becoming bald sevenfold. Yeah, this is the scientists fun. came to this conclusion after studying the blood and scalps of over 2,700 men. Those who started losing their hair earlier in life were more likely to have these genetic changes. And while researchers don't yet understand exactly what these genes are doing to trigger hair loss, they do want to find a way to halt their destructive mission. And then once we identify what it's actually doing, uh, then we can design medicines uh, which will interact with that pathway and decrease its effect on baldness. James Horton watched his father and brother go bald early, a clear sign of a genetic link. Personally, I'd feel better about myself if I wasn't as bald. But this hair transplant surgeon says it may take a long time to turn the new findings into a new treatment. I think we're at least eight to ten years. They still have to sort of find a way to turn off the gene and then they have to sort of do studies on how to turn off the gene. I don't think, although this is, uh, this is interesting academically, realistically this isn't going to be in practice for a little while yet. And I think guys just like to have hair. That's why James is considering a hair transplant, one way of fighting off the genetics of hair loss. Avis Favreau, CTV News, Toronto.